Okay, welcome to the second video on database design, and this one's going to be talking about how to create a data dictionary. Uh, we're still going to be using Andy, Andy Brake system for this, and we're continuing on from the end of video one where we had identified the programmable field names for all four of the entities um, learner, instructor, vehicle, and lesson. Well, first question is what is a data dictionary? Well, the data dictionary defines the way that the data is going to be structured. The uh, Looking again at the entities, we recognize field names. We now need to start to think about the kind of data that's going to be stored in those fields and therefore start to build our database structure to be ready to accept that kind of data. Um, you can see a standard form in front of you. This is a, a basic form, but it does allow you to keep the key information that you need to build your first a database. You'll notice at the top is the title, Data Dictionary. Beneath that is something in square brackets saying entity or table name. We had four entities, so we would use the entity name here, and that starts to become the table name. Um, then we've got the rows and columns to define the table. We'll have a look at this as we go. The first thing to do is identify which entity we're talking about, and in this case, we're going to develop the learner entity, and we're going to start creating the learner table. I won't end up calling it learner table, but I know that's the one that this data dictionary relates to. The first row of information we're going to put in is here. Uh, the P in the first column is, stands for primary, and the P and the F is primary or foreign. So this P is telling us that this row on this data dictionary is for the primary key. Now the name of that primary key, as you identified at the end of the last video, was learner ID. So we know that the primary key for this particular data dictionary table is the learner ID, that's the field name. I haven't included the caption because I know that the learner ID is never going to be seen by anyone. It's simply going to be used by the system to uniquely identify each person in the learner table. So Nicola Long will be assigned a number and that number will be used by the system but never seen by a human being. Therefore no caption is needed. I've also set this type to auto number. Now auto number is a type of number that the system adds, puts on the first value. So the first record will always be given the record 1, the value 1. The next record after that will automatically be given the number 2. So it's using the counting numbers, but the system, not the user, not the human being, but the database management system that sits behind all this, will simply always add 1 to the new record that's being added to the database. So that means we never ever have to worry about it, the system will look after it. Because it's an auto number, I don't need to define a field size, and there's no notes because that's it. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to give it a field name and I'm going to uh, ensure that it's the primary key and simply set it to auto number. The second field is our foreign key. That's the instructor ID. Remember this doesn't belong to the learner but it is something that the learner relates to the instructor. This is going to be the usual instructor so you can see that's what I put in the caption. So the caption is what someone's going to see whenever they see this field. They're never going to see the words instructor ID. They're going to see usual instructor in relationship to this. The data type for this is something called long integer. Now a long integer is a type of number and we'll look at data types uh, shortly. But basically a long integer allows for a very long number. It needs to be a long integer because it's going to relate to the instructor ID in the instructor table which is going to be set up the same way that our learner ID is here. Um, we'll have a look at that when we come to look at building the relationships. The next row on this is the first of our non-key fields, that's first name. Um, again, I've defined the field name as we did at the end, that's the name I'm going to use so that I can program it, but the caption is first name, it's user friendly, so when the user sees this field they're going to see the word first name, and that's going to explain exactly what they need to enter into here. They never need to see the term str first name, it wouldn't make any sense to them. Because I know this is going to be a whole load of uh, letters and numbers, in fact it's going to be all letters for people's first names, I've assigned the data type text. And text allows you to put anything into this at all. Um, it, it will be, text fields are very open. They can be a mixture of numbers, letters or anything else in there. So the first name can be construed of everything, which is fine because I can't restrict. If you want to call your child uh, Alpha 237, then you're free to do so. Uh, you'd be a moron, but you can do so if you wish to. 
Um, field size I've set to 20. Uh, if you've got more than 20 characters in your first name, then that's really difficult for you because you're not going to be able to fit into my database. Um, and that's a really long name. So I've gone for 20 characters. That's 20 letters in your first name. I'm going to assume there's not many people out there with that, and hopefully they're not going to come to Andy Dubrake's driving school. Um, from there, I can go and do all the other fields. They're straightforward. You can see they're all text fields, and this is the last name and house number, street, locality, and all the rest. The only thing that changes is the field size. I hope Maybe someone coming I mean, with a last name longer than 20 characters. That is more likely than the first name because last names can become quite lengthy. House number is 20. Now you might think, well, house number, I mean, how big can these become? But of course, it could be a house name, and some people like to choose long names. So 20 characters for that. And 30 for the others. I may have a discussion and decide not but, uh, not to have that. It might be longer or shorter. But you do want to limit the file size as much as possible because this is taking space up on the hard drive. And with a small database, it's not a problem. But with a huge database, lots and lots of people, big insurance company, this could take up lots and lots of terabytes of data. I've stopped there, but obviously if you remember back, we had lots more fields on the learner table, and I stopped there because the next field that we want to have a look at actually has something slightly different. It's the postcode. And the postcode is still text. I've set it to nine characters, and you'll notice that I'm using the notes column now. The notes column to add some special features that I may want to include in there, something to remind me that I need to pay attention to. For example, with a postcode, there is actually a structure to the postcode that I can recognize. It generally consists of a letter, then a letter, then a number. Sometimes there's another number. Then sometimes the next two numbers, or there's two parts, are either two numbers or one number, always followed by two letters. So letter, letter, number, 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 letter, letter is the longest postcode. So that mask, that's, that's called an input mask in the notes column, and that's telling me and the computer when I come to code it in that there is a structure to this. The greater than symbol actually is telling the system that all the letters in this mask must be uppercase. The letter L is not simply the letter L, but it tells the computer that whatever someone types into that position must be a letter. It cannot be a number or a character, it must be a, a letter from A to Z. So if you wanted to enter M and then B, you can do because that's perfectly fine. The letter L, the letter L will let you put two letters in. The zero says you must enter a number. It must be a number and you must enter one. The nine means that you could enter a number. If you don't, it will remain empty. But if you try to enter anything else in there, it will fail. So we then got a space, and the space is counted. We see it as empty, but actually the computer does have to know it's there. Then we've got the nine again, could be a number, the zero, must be a number. Remember, 9 doesn't mean could be a number, could be something else. It means it's either a number or just don't put anything there. 0 means you must put something here and it must be a number. Letter means you've got to put a letter in here. So that's an input mask and that tells the system so I can build up a model of what the postcode looks like. So any postcode that's entered into my system must match that, which stops anyone from entering the word duck in for postcodes. It reduces the risk of er erroneous uh, postcodes because if you try to type in the word duck, it will accept the D and the U, but the C and the K will fail because they're not numbers. The next one does the same thing. And this is always the one that gets people. Why is telephone number str? Why is it a string? Why have I set it to text? For God's sake, it's obviously a number because we use the word number in it. In build, uh, building databases, you've actually got to start looking at what the actual data is, not what the name implies it is. A telephone number actually contains things that are not numbers. If you look at the notes side, you see the input mask has got a bracket. Then five zeros, which means you've got to enter a number in each of those positions. That's for the area code. Then there's a close bracket, then there's a space, then there's three numbers followed by a space followed by three numbers. And it's those brackets and the spaces and the fact that the area code starts with zero dictates that you cannot have this as a number. 
we will have a look at those again but that note is the input mask just like postcode telephone numbers have a structure and just like the notes fill uh, the postcode field I've put above the um, note part for telephone is the input mask we will actually use that in our database again you count the spaces and you count the brackets so there are actually 15 characters long there are the there's the two brackets there's the five uh, zeros there's the two spaces and then there's the two groups of three zeros 15 characters in an all therefore we fill this part out but actually we still haven't got to the end of this particular entities fields there were a few more so the next thing I've got to remember is I'm actually going to remember to tell tell the system and tell the user that this is learner table sheet one of two. When I say the user, I mean the developer of the database. The user of the database will never see these sheets at all. They will sit in a manual somewhere. So I've now changed this to learner table sheet one of two, and that allows me to produce sheet two of two, which you can now see. Mobile number is just the same, and slight alteration at uh, the input mask. The date of birth field, strdob, I set it to the data type date time. The field size is 11, and that's because I've defined its structure under notes as day day, month month month, year year, year year. This will allow you to enter 30 nov 1966. It's up to you what you have in there. You can change the structure DD slash MM slash YY, YY, whatever you want, as long as it's a recognized standard structure. I've taken this structure because that's the one that appeared on the original document from Andy Brake School. He had a date which is made up of two numbers, the abbreviated for, form of the month, and then four numbers. You shouldn't decide, you should use, let the current system dictate how your data is going to look. Again, remember four numbers for year, three, num uh, three letters for month, two numbers for day, and two spaces makes 11 characters in total. We've then done the same thing with license. License is text, but I have an input mask. I've used the example given on Andy Brake System for Nicola Long. Notice, however, that I've put an A next to the letters. The greater than symbol is telling us that all the letters on here must be uppercase. And the A says that this is either going to be a letter or a number. In Nicola Long's example, Long is uh, four letters and the next one was a number. But I am aware that sometimes that can be a letter. In fact, I am also aware that Long, if your surname only has three letters, then actually it will be letter, letter, letter. A, A. So I really should have put two more A's there. So I already know my input mask is flawed, but that will come out through testing. So I'm quite happy to continue with it at this point. The next one's a date again, exactly the same as date of birth, but this one is have they passed their test? Then I have the next one, which is a memo field, note. And all I've said is memo. I've not defined a field size, there's no notes about it. I've just called it memo. We'll have a look at what memo means in context with text. Um, it simply allows a lot of text. The next one level is text, 19 characters long. How do I know it's 19? Because the longest word, the, the part to this is going to be where it says disqualified retake. I know from Andy Brake's system that he had four choices. Those four choices are listed in notes. And I will, when I come to code this, ensure that those four choices are embedded into the table. So you can only choose from those four. It will be a selection process that the person will go through, but I must define it as 19 because that's the longest part. The next one is a yes-no field, and this is the pass theory part. Basically, have you passed your theory, yes or no? So there's nothing else to define. The field size doesn't matter. There's no notes for this. It's simply set to yes-no. That will actually give you a little tick box to put in uh, on your form. The last part is the manual automatic. Notice I've called it strut transmission, but the caption is exactly as it appeared on Andy Brake's form. The data type is text, and just like level, I have uh, choices, in this case only two choices, manual, automatic. I've set field size to the longest length, which is the word automatic, so therefore it's nine characters long.
that's the data dictionary that's actually sorted for the data dictionary so there's the, both the sheets and I've now finished the learner table I would now go off and do the instructor and the vehicle and the lesson um, now the next thing to just quickly look at is these data types though there was quite a lot there's only five we need to think about text text is any group of characters or letters um, it allows you to enter up to 20, 255 characters in, in total. Uh, it's like a tweet, but double the tweet or whatever it is. Um, it is basically uh, text fields allow you to put anything into them. If you wish to, you can imagine them as the prostitute of all data types. You'll know, accept anything. Um, the memo field is similar to a text field. I used it on the notes one, but unlike text, it's not as restrictive. Where text only allows 255 characters, the memo field will allow you to use 65,000 or more. Imagine the back of a DVD case. You've got the front, which is the title. That's well, that's fine. That's text. Maybe you've got the director. That's fine. That's text. But the blurb on the back that tells you about the uh, DVD. Well, that's a lot of text. So you'd make it a memo field, so you could enter all that text. Number only allows numbers, either whole counting numbers, fractional numbers, percentiles, anything that's a number. And we're going to have a bit of a look at numbers in a second. Pretty obvious what date time is. It's a date or a time. And yes, no offers you two choices. Uh, yes, no, or whatever else. But it basically allows you to select. So if you know you've only got two choices, yes, no is what you're looking for. Those are the five basics that you would use on the data, uh, data dictionary. There are other ones that you can define, but you'll find out about those as you explore databases further. So when is a number not a number? Well, actually, as we saw with telephone numbers, they're not numbers. So the, one of the first criteria you need to understand is, is there a leading zero? If there is, then remember, with counting numbers, if I've got zero, one, and it's a counting number, I don't mention the zero, I simply say one. And what a database will do is if you enter into a database number and you enter 0, 1, it will drop the leading 0. That's the 0 that comes before the number. Now, that's fine with a number, but with a telephone number, if I try to call a number 01424 and I put and I drop the 0, so I only entered 1424, it would fail. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't be recognized as a telephone number. The second example is like a country code, 0044 is for the UK. If you allowed the leading zeros to be dropped because I defined it as a number, it would select 44. That's not a national international dialing code, and therefore your telephone call would fail. So if you've got a leading zero, it's got to be text. Another one is when there are non-numeric characters, 12N. So if there's ever the risk of a letter or a space, as in 32, space 32, or whatever, brackets, anything that's not a number, then that field cannot be a number, it's going to become text. The third and final one is, does it make sense to perform calculations? My first example states, telephone number multiplied by three. Clearly, that makes no sense. Please take my telephone number and multiply it by three. Why the hell would I do that? It makes no sense whatsoever. Same as the next one, I live at house number 14, please add three. Why would you do that? You wouldn't. So let's not even bother getting involved in it. Those are the three instances. Leading zero, non-numeric character, performing count, not being able to perform or not bothering to perform calculations tells you that a number is not a number. It's a text field. Just to apply that to a telephone number, there's a telephone number. We can see on there that first of all, there's a leading zero, zero, one, four, two, four. We can also see that there are non-numeric characters. There are two brackets and there is a space. And last but not least, as we said before, it makes no sense to perform a calculation upon a telephone number. OK. Finally, with the input masks, just momentarily, just to go through them, those are all the characteristics. You can see that 0, the user must enter a digit, 9, the user can, can enter a digit. I'm not going to read all those. Those are freely available on the web. And obviously you can pause this video at any stage and have a look at those. Uh, they all have special meanings. And they're all incredibly useful. In fact, you should get to know them. And that should help. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful. And I'll talk to you in video number three.